I think my abortion journey really started during family medicine residency. I realized that unfortunately abortion is often siloed in a separate part of healthcare. I had to travel to another state to get this training just because I know that it's an important part of care that people need and I should be trained in it just like I'm trained in how to take care of diabetes and take care of a prenatal patient. The hotline was really started kind of as a harm reduction model. We know people have always been really self-managing their abortions, and so this isn't a new concept, but people just seem to have a lot more questions as a legal landscape has shifted, and we are there to support them in whatever decision they make. We talk to people mostly in states that have abortion bans or restrictions, and they just really need to know their options. So we give them a lot of information about how they can get pills mailed to them, how the process is safe, and then also a lot of people after the process just really want kind of reassurance that everything went okay and that they did what they needed to do. My other job, I work at a sexual and reproductive health clinic in Brooklyn, because even in New York City, where there are a lot of abortion providers, there are a lot of abortion clinics, they're often you know, clustered in certain areas. And so some people might have to travel an hour or two on the subway just to get an abortion. And that can be very difficult if you have kids, if you have jobs, if you're working two jobs. I was very lucky to be a part of the Leadership Training Academy in 2019 into 2020. And just getting to meet with advocates from around the country um, in different specialties, but all of us with a common goal of support for abortion care and access. And the skills that I learned during Leadership Training Academy have continued with me, you know, the past several years. I have done some TV interviews, I've been in articles, I've written a few articles myself. Joined now by Dr. April Lockley. Most of my patients are Black and people of color. They feel as though the medical community doesn't always listen to them or treat them fairly. I don't think I would have jumped out on a limb and taken some of those opportunities if I didn't have the, the support and information from the Leadership Training Academy. I want abortion and medication abortion just to be out there that people know it's an option that it's safe. Being recognized, I think, just helps get the word out about the work that um, myself and my colleagues are doing at the Miscarriage and Abortion Hotline at my clinic here in Brooklyn. Dr. Lockley was nominated by a group of us from the Miscarriage and Abortion Hotline. We appreciate and value her leadership of the hotline, which is an organization that works outside of the formal medical care system. Despite being warned by our movement lawyers that much of our conduct may be risky, April perseveres in leading our group and actually takes on the most risk by taking the riskiest calls and giving people their options. I really am just thinking about the communities and patients and people that need this care and like this award to be for them for being brave and strong to, you know, seek out the care that they need. You know, some people look at, you know, physicians on TV and doing interviews on the national news and all those kind of things and think, oh, how can I get there? Or doing Senate hearings, those kind of things. But advocacy can start really right in your backyard, in your clinic, look in your day to day, like what's going on either in your neighborhood or your community. Sometimes the smallest things can make the biggest difference. So don't be intimidated to, to start small.